President Trump, the only declared, or I think he's the only declared, did Mike Pence officially say he's running or he just said he's probably going to run? Nikki Haley just said she's probably going to run. Joe Biden has now declared that he's running, but he's obviously not campaigning yet. Trump is running. He's declared. He's hit New Hampshire and South Carolina. Here is the campaign message from New Hampshire. When I announce, I just want to put my cards on the table. I, you know, we're playing that very big game right now, the biggest game of all, because it involves the country and the survival of the United States of America. But when I, uh, when I put the cards on, and then I said, all right, let's go. They said, he's not campaigning. This is like about a month ago when I announced. Well, I said, you know, I got two years. They said, he's not doing rallies. He's not campaigning. Maybe he's lost that step. Uh, we didn't. I'm more angry now, and I'm more committed now than I ever was. Because Okay, so Trump is acknowledging the criticism of his campaign and his campaign loss. And it would seem that he's reacting to it, too, because he starts now doing events. But he didn't do a big rally. This was an event really for locals and the Republican leadership in New Hampshire. And then he says this line, I'm angrier now than I've ever been before. But the way he says it, he doesn't seem angry. Nor necessarily should he seem angry. He's, it, it, Trump running in 2024 is a very different thing than Trump running in 2016. He's a different person. He's got different experience. He brings a different ethos to the whole, to the whole matter. But you, you can, the only thing you can really tell, I think, I agree with Trump. He's got two years. I agree that a lot of the criticism of his campaign is BS. I agree that it's mostly just people on the left and the right who hate his guts, and the people on the left are trying to stop him from running, and the people on the right who are attacking him now probably in most cases are people who hated him in 2016 also. So all of that is true. But I think it is fair to say he doesn't seem to have the same fire. He doesn't seem to have the same focus. When he came down that escalator in 2015, he said, the, the illegal aliens, they're rapists and they're murderers. They're being sent across. We need to build a big wall and deport all these people who are invading our country. Love it or hate it, that's a clear message. We're getting screwed on trade deals. We're going to stick it to China. We're going to completely upend America's trade policy. Love it or hate it, that is a very clear message. It distinguished him from the others in the crowd. Now, just by virtue of the fact that he was already the president, it's, it's going to be harder to distinguish himself from the rest of the party. He recreated the party after his own image. So I think he's going to have to try something different. He then hit South Carolina and announced a big leadership team, and he got a big endorsement from that state senator, Lindsey Graham. There's one thing I want to talk to you about. How many, how many times have you heard, we like Trump uh, policies, but we want somebody new? There are no Trump policies without Donald Trump. I was there. You know why $400 billion was given by NATO nations? Because he asked and they were afraid to say no. Every president since I've been up there has asked NATO to give more money, but they gave more money when he asked. People talk about China. You did something about China. They finally paid. Everybody's been talking about China. You made them pay. You know why Mexico said yes to you? Because you scared the hell out of them by taking on China. We live in a dangerous world right now. The good news for the Republican Party, there are many, many talented people for years to come. But there is only one Donald Trump. And I say this sincerely. You can talk about his policies, but you could not do what he did. This is the message that Trump has to drive home. And it's funny that it's coming from Lindsey Graham because Lindsey Graham is considered kind of a squish and they call him Lindsey graham -nasty and all sorts of things. And Graham was very opposed to Trump in 2016. He obviously ran against him. Then he became much more supportive of Donald Trump. And I don't care if you love Lindsey Graham or you hate Lindsey Graham. One, Lindsey Graham is a great trial lawyer and he's very good at getting himself reelected. And he's, he's just a very talented politician, even if you think he's a big squish lib. And so the fact that Lindsey Graham is putting his money on Donald Trump does tell you a little something about a political calculation. Lindsey Graham feels that the political wind is still blowing in the direction of Donald Trump. And Lindsey Graham has hit on the campaign message that Trump needs, which is there is no Trumpism without Trump. The DeSantis campaign message is there is Trumpism without Trump. 
I am the better version of Trump. I am more disciplined. I am better educated. I am I, I'm better able to make deals. I'm less polarizing. I'm whatever. The whole list of Ron DeSantis's campaign pitch, it essentially boils down to, I am Trump, but better. And so Trump's campaign message has to be, there is no better Trump. I'm, I'm Trump. I'm unique. I'm an American original. There's nobody like me. There's a lot of imitators out there, but I'm the only one who can do it. And even if we both have the same policies, I can get it done. There's more to politics than just policy on a sheet of paper. I can get it done. Now, what DeSantis' argument is going to be, actually, I got it done better than you did. And then Trump's argument is going to be, you could never have done any of that without me. One, you wouldn't have gotten elected without me. But two, if I didn't give you political cover from the national level, you wouldn't have been able to do a good job as governor. And that's going to be the battle. But, but if the issue it, it just comes down to issues, I don't know that Trump is going to win. Because the party and the smart politicians in the party have taken a, a page out of Trump's book and adopted his positions on issues. Positions that seven, eight years ago would not have been acceptable on immigration, on trade, on the, the involvement of the government in the daily lives of Americans. That would not have been on foreign policy for that matter. So the only way that Trump can distinguish himself is by saying, I'm the one who can do it. I do it in a different way. The fact that I am polarizing, the fact that I am brash, the fact that I'm unpredictable, the fact that I'm not totally educated in this uh, politician university kind of way, that is my plus. It's not a negative. That's my plus. And that's the message that Lindsey Graham has honed in on. And I think it's a very strong one. If he can, if he can make a persuasive case for that thesis, the nomination probably is still his. Don't forget, we're talking about, especially Ron DeSantis, because he's just so impressive in Florida. You're seeing DeSantis's numbers shoot up out of nowhere up to a, a pretty respectable number. Now, what is he now? He's at 30% or something, even higher. But Trump is still way up. It, the, the primary contest remains Trump's to lose, but he's got some big weaknesses, especially when it comes to COVID, which we'll get to in one second. Right now, go to genucell.com slash Knowles. Our friends over at Genucell Skincare have exciting news to celebrate in 2023. They are introducing their new microbiome moisturizer, which uses the power of probiotics to target skin redness, pesky wrinkles, fine lines, patchy blotches, and other signs of premature aging. These are the same probiotics that are in your yogurt. As it turns out, these super ingredients can have the same nourishing benefits on your skin as they do in your gut. Probiotic extracts target bad bacteria and restore balance to your skin's protective barrier. Now, every GenuCell most popular package includes their new probiotic moisturizer free with your order. I love these guys. I'm always skeptical of cosmetic creams and ointments. Uh, so I said, okay, before I endorse, I want to see this product. I want to have it for myself so that I can try it on my own face. And I really, really trust these guys. Okay. Right now you can get GenuCell's most popular package for 70% off, 7-0. Go to GenuCell.com slash Knowles. Get your probiotic moisturizer today. Use code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S, at checkout for an extra 10% off your entire purchase. Genucell.com slash Knowles. That is Genucell.com slash Knowles. Senator Ron Johnson is standing up for the vaccine injured. He says, the vaccine injured deserve to be seen, heard, and believed. And then he tags a news agency. He says, are you aware of the COVID-19 vaccine injuries in the aviation industry? My letter highlights five of these severe adverse events experienced by pilots and an air traffic controller. So you got Ron Johnson has this, this letter that he's put out and, and uh, it's now being reported in a number of places, including the Epoch Times, of, of pilots specifically who all had to get the stupid Fauci ouchie and many of whom have suffered adverse uh, events now. He says, quote, it remains unclear what, if anything, the FAA has done as it relates to these individuals' experiences or if it is actively monitoring COVID-19 adverse effects in the aviation industry. As of January 13th, VAERS, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, recorded more than 1.5 million adverse effects and 33,746 deaths associated with the COVID-19 vaccines. And I think a lot of people hear that number from VAERS and they say, oh, well, VAERS is unverified. And so that's, that number is actually probably overblown. No, it's the opposite. Time and time again, we see evidence 
that VAERS actually drastically underreports vaccine injuries. Now think about this. Do you know anyone in your life who has suffered a vaccine injury? Or do you know someone who knows someone who suffered a vaccine injury? Most people, I think, do. I certainly do. And I think most people know someone or know someone who knows someone who suffered a vaccine injury. Then ask yourself, did that person file a report with the vaccine adverse events reporting system? Usually not. Most people will not do, or even you might say, well, I got, my kid got this vaccine and then things started to seem a little weird or yeah, I, I started to have these, I don't know, kind of shortness of breath or heart problems or this or that, but I'm not going to, I don't know. I don't want to seem like a crazy person. So VAERS underreports that. How many people actually died from this vaccine? VAERS says 33,746. I bet that number is much, much higher. In addition, a Department of Defense whistleblower provided Ron Johnson's office with data, quote, showing an increase in disease and injuries in pilots across the DOD in years 2020 to 2022 compared to years 2016 to 2019. Now, there will be debate. They'll, you'll hear the libs say, well, no, the, the, the adverse effects were caused by the, the virus, not by the vaccine. No, no, it was just the virus. You know, the virus was everywhere. It's caused by the virus, not the vaccine. That merits some study because what, what little evidence is available now doesn't seem to suggest that. And, and furthermore, the fact that we're not even allowed to raise that question tells you, I think, everything you need to know. The fact that if you raise that question, you can, in many circumstances, be kicked off of social media. You will be looked on as, as, a, as an idiot. You'll, you'll be called a misinformer. You'll, you'll be accused of, of committing something tantamount to murder because you're spreading health misinformation. And then to tie it back to the political 2024 question, this is Trump's biggest weakness. And this is, I suspect, where DeSantis and any other challenges are going to hit Trump the hardest. Is they're going to say, you promoted this vaccine. This vaccine was bad news. And so what Trump is going to do, and you're already starting to see this, is Trump is going to start to hit DeSantis there. He's going to say, what are you, you promoted the vaccine too. And you locked down too. Don't pretend that you didn't lock down. You locked down for months. And you're already seeing Trump start to make that attack. So even now, 2024, this will be four years after COVID-19. I strongly suspect that much of the Republican primary is going to come down to COVID. We are still processing the COVID lockdowns. And, and we think we've moved on because we don't wear the stupid hankies anymore over our face. And even the people who formerly took, were very afraid of COVID and who promoted the vaccines and who even most of those people, virtually all of those people on the right have come back to reality and said, okay, actually, yeah, that was crazy. We shouldn't have given up our rights. We shouldn't have locked down. Shouldn't have worn the stupid hanky. Shouldn't have taken the Fauci ouchy. Okay. All right, fine. But just because the people on the right now broadly agree on, on what we should have done, it doesn't mean that we're past it. That was a national trauma. People died alone. People were not allowed to say goodbye to their loved ones. Kids were taken out of school. It's seriously damaged their education and their socialization. It, the, the good news about taking kids out of school is that it, it uh, prevented them from learning a bunch of insane nonsense from their woke teachers. That was a good thing. It prevented their socialization in the sense that it stopped them from becoming socialists more quickly. But it, it did seriously harm them. The fact that kids weren't allowed to see their friends seriously harmed their development. Destroyed our economy, destroyed small businesses. It was the largest transfer of wealth in recorded history from the lower classes to the upper classes. It was a major transfer of our political rights away from communities and away from American citizens toward unelected, unaccountable bureaucrats who hate our guts. We're still, we've still got to grapple with that. Today is Music Monday. The rest of the show continues now. Mr. Davies and the producing team has some really profound music for me to analyze because you know I am a cultural maven. I am this, the hip hop, pippity pop kind of music man over here. You don't want to miss it. Become a member and use code Knowles, K-N-W-L-E-S at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. We'll see you over there. <laughs> 